Okay, so we're just here with Remy. Dog, go away. <laughs> we're just gonna do a little video here for its owners to show them how we like to start the day with Remy, how we like to use our obedience and training for the house, and uh, just give them a bit of a, a better understanding of how we should use the training, what tone of voice we should have when we're giving commands, how we should present ourselves to our dogs, and how we should go through the structure that we've, uh, we've taught Remy here. So we're gonna start with putting the e-collar on, so we make sure it's all turned on. So the e-collar needs to be turned on first. Make sure this green light is blinking. To turn that on, we're just gonna take the red dot here and the red dot here, touch them together, turn it off and turn it on. Make sure your remote is on too. You should see the screen with the blue light there. If your remote's not on, you'll just hold the black button on the back. This is the power button, this big black button. You'll hold that down and turn it on. So we're making sure all of our equipment is on and ready to go before we put it on the dog. So we're gonna open up the crate now for Remy. We're gonna ensure Remy's not barging into the crate or anything. We expect our dogs to, once the e-collar is on, we expect them to lay down and relax and wait for that release cue. Um, at the moment though, there's no e-collar on Remy, so I'm not gonna give any commands right now, uh, especially not early in your training here when, when Remy goes home with you. You don't wanna be giving commands without the ability to enforce them, so having the e-collar on first is, is gonna be your first step before you even start giving commands. So we're gonna place this on now. We're gonna go ahead and put it on the dog's neck. On the left or the right side of the neck, never directly onto the trachea typically. Snugging that up, and you'll see where that is. We're gonna go on the left or the right side of the neck on this big muscle group here is where we typically will put it. Again, making sure everything's turned on. Now we're gonna ask Remy for a down command. Remy's down, and we would use the e-collar to correct if he didn't immediately lay down there. So when we're using the e-collar for commands, we're gonna give a command, and if the dog does not immediately respond to the command within about a second of us giving it, we're gonna to begin to tap on the e-collar at a motivating enough level. I'm typically gonna start this e-collar at about a 15 for Remy here. So during the, during the day in the house here, we're gonna start our levels off at about a 15 or so, but that's going to change as we move along. So you're gonna to wanna to be fluid with this dial, okay? Now he's in a down, he's waiting patiently. So I have a bit of a cold, I got the sniffles. So we can release him out of here. We can release him out of here using either a release cue, which is a break command, or we can use a recall command, or even a heal command to get him moving through the house immediately. So I'm gonna go ahead and release him here, and I'm gonna use a recall to release him, okay? So I'm gonna release him with a recall, and I expect him to come to me and sit in front of me and wait. Once he comes to me, I can say hello, I can give him a pet, I can say good morning to him, whatever I wanna do. And then from there, we're gonna begin moving through the house using our commands, okay? So we're gonna use our heal command to move him through the house, we're gonna use our recall command to get him out of the crate, and uh, you're gonna kinda of see how that works here. So I'm gonna go grab the remote here, the camera. Just gonna grab this and adjust it. Okay, so now we got Remy here, so we're gonna recall him out of the crate here. I'm using my gimbal here, so it might get a little bit uh, weird with the camera angles. Remy, come. Good boy. And then he's expected to come over here. Remy, sit. I'm actually gonna take this off the gimbal because it's annoying me. Good boy. So again, recalling him out, asking for that sit. Turning my gimbal off here. Good morning. You can give him a pet, you can tell him good morning, whatever you wanna do. Now from here, we can use our commands to move him through the house. We can use our heel command to begin walking through the house with him, keeping him in structure, right? I don't want him rushing over all over the room here, looking for stuff to do, looking for food to pick up. Um, whatever he's gonna do, he'll do that, right? And we wanna actually correct that response. If he comes out of that crate, maybe we don't recall him, maybe we just give him a release cue, and his first thought is to rush up towards the stairs or rush over to some food on the ground. We're gonna correct that using our e-collar immediately. And we call that letting the dog bump into the boundaries. We call that letting them discover where the, the rules and stuff are. So when he comes home with you, you may experiment with that. You may let him kind of free through the house, correcting him for things that he is not supposed to be doing, picking up food off the ground, trying to shove his nose underneath the kitchen counter to look for crumbs. All of those little things can be corrected without any guidance or commands needed. So we're going to give him a heel command and begin walking here. So we're going to get our remote collar out. We're going to say heel, and we're going to tap on the T button on our remote here. This makes the tone sound on the, the e-collar. So we're going to say heel and tap on that tone button. Remy's expected to stay behind us here, beside us, beside this left leg in this heel command, sit. And we're going to have him sit and wait at thresholds like stairs and doorways, making sure we're practicing good impulse control. Remy, heel. That's one of Remy's biggest issues is just lack of impulse control, which has gotten into some trouble at, uh, at home, especially regarding his small, uh, his siblings, his, the, the small children that he lives with. Sit. 
And this is just a simple lack of direction and, uh, and rules, accountability, and structure for a dog like him. He basically lives free at home or has up until this point, and he's been making his own rules and decisions, and those have been typically pretty poor decisions, resulting in things like him trying to nip people, him becoming reactive or aggressive towards other dogs, and even, like I said, getting a little bit snippy with their, their small child because of a lack of rules and boundaries and a lack of impulse control, not because he's an aggressive dog, not because he's a mean dog. Um, and it's all been really easy for us to manage and control, and his owners are going to have a lot of success with this. So we're going to say heel, heel, tap our tone again, make our way up the stairs. You can see how in tune Remy is here. He's just waiting for these commands and he loves it. So good boy, Remy. So we're healing him through the house here up to the back door. Now we're going to let him out for a potty break. This is the first time he's been up this morning. So we're going to let him out for our potty break. We're going to open up our back door and correct him if he tries to go out. So notice how I'm not giving any commands here. I'm not giving him a sick command. I'm not saying stay, you know, so many people stay, stay, Remy, stay as they're backing at the door. We're not doing anything like that, right? I'm letting the dog here. The dog knows what he's supposed to do in this situation. We've taught him many times through bumping into boundaries that going out the door without a release cue is unacceptable. Going through any threshold with no release cue is unacceptable. And that's where we get this strong impulse control. So. Again, no commands, just opening the door and correcting with the e-collar, a no and an e-collar correction if he begins to move out the door without my permission. So if I see him starting to walk towards the exit of this door, gets his nose up to here or puts his paws out here, that's going to be a no and a correction for me. And that's such a good way to establish impulse control throughout your day with your dog. Think about the amount of times you let them in and out of doorways, up and down stairs, in and out of their crate. Those are all amazing opportunities to practice really good impulse control. So we're going to release Remy here. Remy, break. And he's going to go outside. He's going to go down the stairs and he's going to go potty. And then we're going to call him back in and show you what that looks like, okay? And he's going to be right on the All right, so he's nice. back here with Remy. We're going to let him inside now. Again, no commands or anything. No telling him to wait or stay. He's expected to do that. You can see he's a little bit jumpy right now that he wants to come in. So we're going to grab his remote here. We're going to release him in. Remy, break. Now he's on break, so I released him with a break cue. He doesn't need to do anything now. He can. He does still come and sit in front of me. I love that. That's great. Good job, Remy. Thank you, working. That's really nice. I like that. He's on break, so he's technically free to do what he wants. But you can see he just wants direction from me. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a heel command. Heel. I'm going to bring him over to the place bed here. And I'm just going to put him down on the place bed so you can see that. Remy. Saying his name first and then giving the command. So we're going to give the command very clearly. Remy, place pointing to the place bed as we say the command. I like to be within a few feet of the place bed when I give that command. If the dog is kind of far away, maybe in the next room or whatever, I might recall them and then put them on the place bed to get them a little closer to the objective. On the place bed, he's expected to relax. I can put him into a down. Remy, down. Good job. Correcting on the e-collar there because he's too slow for that down. So I'm gonna correct on the e-collar. I said. I said down, he was a little slow to respond, so I corrected. That's a level eight, and we can actually even maybe turn that down a touch. Um, he's just a little jumpy with that level there, so we can turn that down maybe a touch, but that's okay. Remy can be a touch jumpy with the e-collar once in a while, even at lower levels if it catches him by surprise. He might be a touch flinchy, but that's okay. He understands it perfectly. So now he's in the down, so we can come over here, we can do what we want, you know, we can make our coffee or whatever we need to do and go about our day while he's in this place command. He's in this structured place command. So say we have the child running around the house, say we have something to tend to here within the kitchen or even in the next room over, that place bed is a great spot for him to relax, stay and be in a boundary that he knows he can't leave no matter what distractions come his way, right? So we can even attempt to, you know, break that, get him to break that place command so we can correct it. And this is especially important when he comes home to you is making sure you're proofing this stuff with him, right? So I'm gonna toss this ball and he's gonna get a correction if he gets off and moves towards it, which he didn't do. And we're gonna do this stuff at home with him with things that might trigger him to get off the bed, right? Squeaky toys, door knocking, the child running around the house, other animals within the house. All of these things are not permission for him to break the command unless we give him permission to break said command, right? And even if I release him from the command here, doesn't mean he's allowed to rush towards this ball, right? So watch this. So Remy, break. Nice. So if he were to rush over towards the ball, I would simply give a tap on the e-collar, a no and a tap on the e-collar, a correction. Just because there's a ball moving doesn't mean that that's for him. And this is how we control a dog's impulse, right? Making sure that they understand that unless they're given the opportunity to enter and play a game with us or play with the toy or interact with it in an exciting way, we most likely don't want that. There's most likely not a time or a place where we want our dog to just start acting impulsively, chasing and biting things, regardless if it's a toy or another animal or a child, it all equates to the same exact thing. Remy, place. 
Good boy. Giving that place command. Again, he's he, he was a touch slow to respond there, so I hit the tone button. Uh, instead, you could even hit the stimulation button. He ignored the command, so I could stimulate there um, or use that tone button to prompt that, that recall over the place bed. Good job. Down. Now, whenever we give a command, if he doesn't immediately respond, we are going to tap that stimulation as a correction, okay? So not when I tap the tone, but really, you should tap the, the, the stimulation to apply a correction when he ignores the command. Remy, come. Good boy. Nice. Sit. Good boy. Nice. Again, using those commands. Now, we're going to bring him downstairs here. I'm going to, again, go over the crate a little bit here, too, with him and show us what that looks like. So heal. Again, healing him through the house. He's going to go back into his crate now where I'm going to feed him. And uh, this is kind of going to be his morning routine. So we let him out, let him out for a potty break. He hung out for a little bit on the place. And uh, now we're going back downstairs so I can let Timmy out for a potty break. And we're going to feed Remy. So I'm going to put him into his crate here. Now you can see, again, he's healing through the house beautifully with me. Remy, sit. Nope. There's a no and a correction, right? Sit. Because he tried to anticipate rushing into the crate when I gave him a sit command. And that's just because he knows when we come down here, he's most likely going to be going to his crate. But I don't want him forward thinking like that. I don't want him trying to guess what's going to happen next. That is, again, where a dog like Remy can get themselves into some trouble is by thinking impulsively like that. Trying to think ahead instead of responding to what I need him to do. So I'm going to give him that place command now, okay? Remy, place. And the place command is the pl command we use for the crate as well. We say place. The crate is his home base. It, very important here, right? The crate is going to be used a ton when he gets home. Anytime, you know, obviously at nighttime, sleeping in the crate. When you're not home, in the crate and away, right? Even when you're home, though, I still want him to spend at least an hour, two hours even, every day in the crate when you are home. And then you're also using the crate for situations where you can't be watching him. You have a child at home, you're going to have to be tending to that child at certain times. And it's super important to make sure that if you are too busy tending to your child or other things in your life, he is away in the crate so he can't make poor decisions without your ability to influence him, right? So I don't want you guys to go have a shower and just leave him out free in the house while you're doing that. He can go in his crate for that 15 minutes. Same thing if you're doing something outside or whatever and he's not involved in it, put him away and just let him be in his crate where he can't have any unwanted experiences, he can't do any bad behaviors, and he actually, quite frankly, enjoys his crate. He likes to spend time in there, give him a chew or a bone or something in his crate so he has something to occupy himself with. And then the other thing we do as well to make this crate a very fun, safe place for them is we feed them in here. They always get fed in the crate as well, especially important with multiple dogs in the house or children even. Um, just making sure that the dog understands that they have a safe spot to enjoy their food, enjoy their bone, and they can just relax and escape the hecticness of a, of a household, especially a household with other animals or other children and stuff. So the crate is a very good, safe home base for him that's going to be super important to use, especially in the first months that he's home with you. We're going to be using it a ton. So I'm going to get his food here. I'm going to dish that up and show you what that looks like. All right, like so we're going to feed him here now, and I'll show you what that routine looks like. So the door is open. I'm going to place the food down. If he attempts to go for it before we give a release cue, we're going to mark with a no and give an e-collar correction. And now what we can do is while he's waiting, giving us eye contact, we're always looking for eye contact with these things. Thresholds, permission to eat food, permission to exit the crate. Always wait for eye contact before you release. That is permission from your dog. Remy, break. Break. He can give him that break command and he can eat that at his own leisure. We'll close that door. He might take a couple minutes to scarf that down. Um, but that's perfect. Now he can hang out in there for about a half an hour or so. He's going to eat, hang out in there for half an hour and digest. And then we're going to get him out for his morning walk. And that's what our routine is going to look like with him. You can, of course, change that up at home as long as the structure and the rules with these things stays the same. So, you know, if you want to let him out and bring him for a walk immediately, you're more than welcome to do that. It's just so important that you're doing it in the same kind of structure healing him through the house, waiting at thresholds, etc. right? Waiting for the food and stuff. So that's fantastic. That's a good uh, little start for Remy there. We'll show you what the walk and stuff looks like as well and make a video with that. But that is, as far as obedience in the house goes, that's a good little uh, video there to show you how that should look. Of course, things are going to be a bit different at home when you have children and stuff around. And it's going to take some more effort on your part to be proofing this stuff and to make sure that he's still remaining the same level of impulse control that he has here back at home. So Doing this stuff is, is so important. So now we're going to do Timmy here and let him out. So good job, Remy.